Hi everyone, I'm Renee and welcome back to my channel. Halloween is right around the corner, so for today's video I want to show you how I made this spooky spider cake. In this video I use a really, really fun technique for creating these stringy marshmallow spider webs and I've seen it on the internet for a few years now so I was excited to give it a try. I believe I was able to trace this technique back to a cake decorator named Carrie Selman who created a tutorial for the cake vlog and I will link that article down below. Now if you're ready to see how I made this cake, let's get started. I started by baking three seven inch rounds of my vanilla cake recipe and I will have that recipe linked down below for you. To make it a little bit more interesting, I dyed small portions of the same vanilla cake batter, purple and black. I drizzled a little of each color onto each layer, then used a palette knife to swirl the colors together for a marble effect. I used a little bit of leftover batter to bake off a couple of cupcakes. We need one of them for the spider on top of the cake. For my cake filling, I'm using a white chocolate custard. I actually have a really old video with the recipe, which I will link for you. And I just tinted it with a little bit of lemon yellow and green to make this lime green so it's a little bit more fun. My cakes are baked and cooled and I just leveled the top of each layer. This layer looks a little bit funky because I only had two 7 inch round pans so I baked this in an 8 inch round and just trimmed the sides. For the cake assembly I need to use a nice dam of my buttercream and I'm using my Swiss buttercream recipe, I will link that below for you. Because we're using a custard filling, I don't want it to squish out, so this buttercream dam will help keep everything inside. Then I use that bright green custard and just fill the inside of the cake. I gave the cake a nice crumb coat, making sure to cover up all of the exposed cake. Then I'm going to pop the cake in the refrigerator to let it chill so the buttercream can firm up. Then I iced the cake with a finished coating of buttercream. You can see I've colored my Swiss meringue buttercream this beautiful bright purple color. If you struggle to color your Swiss meringue buttercream, I do have a video with my tips for getting nice vibrant colors and I'm going to be sure to put a link in the description for you. After the whole cake is iced, I use a scraper to make it nice and smooth. Then the cake is going to go in the refrigerator so that buttercream gets nice and firm. And now for the fun part. I have a 10 ounce bag of regular sized marshmallows and I'm going to melt about two thirds of that bag. I melted it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then just stir it so all of those marshmallows get melted. Now it is pretty warm at this point and we're going to be touching it with our hands so you want to stir it until it cools down enough to handle. You can see how stringy it is and that's going to be perfect for our spider webs. I'm going to wear gloves for this messy process. My marshmallow is cool enough to handle so this technique is super simple. You just grab a bit of marshmallow and you stretch it between your hands to create those beautiful strings. You just stretch it out and then pull it across the cake wrapping it around in all different directions. I happen to really love the way it looks when you make a big thick string and then it kind of pulls apart in the middle. I think it looks like spooky cobwebs. To try and get the bottom edge of the cake, I pulled the marshmallow out and then tried to let it drape down a bit and wrap it around trying to catch that draped part at the bottom of the cake. Then
This technique is so fun, you guys. I highly, highly recommend you give it a try. The hardest part is just deciding it's time to stop. The process can get a little bit messy, so I just used a damp paper towel and it really was easy to clean all that errant marshmallow off of my cake plate. As a little optional touch, I added some white sugar pearls and sprinkles here and there around that marshmallow web. It just makes it look like maybe things got caught in the web or there are spider eggs and gives a little bit more texture to the cake. Now to make the big spider that sits on top, I have my cupcake all baked and I'm just gonna take it out of its wrapper and flip it onto a cake circle just to work with it. I'm gonna ice this cupcake with my purple buttercream and if you use a skewer to help hold it down to the cake board, it really helps. Then smooth out the buttercream as best you can so that we have a nice smooth surface to cover with fondant. I rolled out some black fondant and I'm just gonna cover that cupcake. Now I did chill the cupcake and that firmed up the buttercream, it just made it easier to handle. When I trim away the excess fondant, I'm just leaving a bit of an overhang and it's not perfect and that's okay. Then flip the cupcake over and work that little extra bit of fondant over the edge. Don't worry, the underside won't be seen, so this doesn't have to be really pretty. But I do want to neaten things up a bit, so I put a little bit of scrap fondant into the space that wasn't covered. I rolled out a circle and thinned the edges, and then I'm just going to attach that to the underside. This will just neaten things up and give us a nice level surface on the bottom of this cupcake or spider body. Then I flipped it back over and just made sure everything was nice and smooth. I rolled out a small ball and kind of elongated it so it's an oval shape and that will be the little spider head. I flattened it against the table so that there was a flat edge and used that edge to attach to the cupcake so it fits nice and snug. Now for the eyes, I'm using black dragees and I'm using a toothpick just to mark out where I want to place them. Spiders have multiple eyes and I'm gonna use eight. Then I used a little bit of water just with a brush on each of those little spots and attached the dragees, pressing them into the fondant. Then to make the spider legs, I rolled out a rope of black fondant and to make the legs equal size, I just folded the rope and trimmed the edges and then they'll be the exact same size. I tapered one end by just rolling it between my fingers and against the table so it comes to a point. Then with just a little bit of water, I took a piece of toothpick and attached it into the untapered end of the rope and just kind of pressed it and rolled it so that the fondant would stick really well to that toothpick. Then bend it at an angle near the toothpick end to form the spider's leg. I set these on foam to dry. You want them to harden enough to hold their shape, but still be somewhat flexible so they don't break and crack when attaching to the cake. And of course, I made eight of these legs. And I made some smaller baby spiders to go on the cake. I just rolled balls of black fondant and it doesn't matter if they're the same size or not. And then I pressed each ball down a little bit to make a flat surface on the bottom. For the legs on these small spiders, I used a small strip cutter to make strips of thinly rolled black fondant. And then I trimmed them to approximately equal lengths. Then gently roll each of these little strips in my palm. This is going to one, get rid of the excess cornstarch that I use for dusting, and two, I want to taper both ends of this little strip. For each baby spider, you need four strips, and I'm going to attach two together with just a little bit of water in the middle, and then bend it to a sharp V shape. And this is gonna give me four legs for one side of the body. Then I'll do the same to the other two strips to create the four legs for the other side of the body. Then I put a slight bend in each of the legs.
Then use just a little tiny bit of water on the bottom of that ball of fondant and attach the legs right underneath. Then use a tiny ball of black fondant to create a little head and set this aside to dry. Now it's time to bring everything together. I'm using a bubble tea straw to support my spider body, as well as a couple of toothpicks inserted underneath just to keep that spider in place. Then starting in the front, I'm gonna attach my spider legs. Just gently touching the spider leg to the marshmallow should be enough to help stick it in place. Tweezers are helpful for inserting that toothpick when your fingers can't fit in that space. I want the spider legs to bend over the edge of the cake, so this is where it's helpful to have the fondant still be a little bit pliable so it doesn't crack and break. But if you do get a little break, it's okay. You can just reattach it with a little bit of water. Then all that's left to do is to randomly place those baby spiders around the side of the cake. The marshmallow should be sticky enough to hold those spiders in place. Otherwise, I recommend just a little bit of buttercream. And that's it. I am terrified of spiders, but I love how this cake turned out. I had so much fun making this cake, playing with that marshmallow. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. And be sure to click the bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload.